In the 19th century, the deadliest threat to European colonial ambition wasn't a rival army. It was a parasite delivered on the wings of a mosquito. Malaria, grimly named the white man's grave, turned entire continents into no-go zones. But for those in the know, there was a lifeline, a chalky, throat-scraping powder that was bitter enough to make you wince, scraped from the bark of a tree growing half a world away in the Andes. On this episode of The History of Plants, we're tracing the story of that tree, Sincona, and the potent chemical inside its bark, quinine. It's the tale of a miracle cure that saved millions from one of history's most relentless killers, and at the same time became a tool of empire that helped redraw the map of the modern world. From an indigenous remedy found in the Andean cloud forests to a catalyst for conquest, Sincona and quinine's journey is part medical breakthrough, part colonial scandal, and fully entangled in the legacy of how we fight disease. Malaria has stalked humanity for a millennia, long before we had a name for it. Caused by a microscopic parasite in the genus Plasmodium, the deadliest strain Plasmodium falciparum likely evolved in Africa alongside early humans. And as people migrated, cultivated land, and formed settlements, the disease spread with them, not carried by person to person, but by the bite of an infected Anopheles mosquito. This parasite has haunted every corner of human history, leaving behind a trail of feverish and icky, (laughs) lack of a better phrase, breadcrumbs and everything from clay tablets to Greek tragedies. By the time the European empires turned their gaze towards the tropics, malaria wasn't just a public health crisis. It was an invisible enemy that was frustratingly standing between the British Empire and the global expansion they craved. They were fighting a fever that wouldn't yield to faith, to force, or to folklore. And if the empire was going to win, it needed a cure. It was the Jesuits that first arrived in the Viceroyalty of Peru in 1568. They learned the local languages, studied healing practices, and, somewhere along the way, encountered a bark that stopped fevers in their tracks. They may not have known how it worked, but the important part is they recognized it did. By the early 1640s, powdered cinchona bark was being distributed through Jesuit networks, eventually making its way to Rome, where physicians began to use it to treat fevers. Soon it was appearing in apothecaries around Europe, powdered, packed in small wooden boxes, and prescribed for the intermittent fevers that had long plagued the continent. And that made cinchona bark, not just the medicine, but the ability to cultivate and control it, one of the most strategically valuable assets in the 19th century. Empires are fragile, and as war loomed over the horizon, so did disaster. For something that shaped centuries of medicine, trade, and war, the cinchona tree doesn't get much fanfare today. Many wild cinchona species are now classified as vulnerable or endangered, not because they've been over-harvested, but because they've been forgotten. The cinchona tree has changed the course of medicine, of war, and of empire, but today it's mostly just a footnote.